this 19th century painting by Swedish artist August Malmström reveals the influence of constantly changing wind direction on an early morning fog plume. With weak winds, motions on scales just larger than the turbulence lead to continual changes of wind direction. These weak motions, sometimes referred to as submeso motions, include gravity waves, microfronts, and numerous more complex signatures, some of them illustrated in this video. In this first image, strongly stratified ground fog moves slowly from right to left over a roadbed about one meter high. Remarkably, the top of the ground fog, two to three meters above the ground, is not perturbed by the roadbed. That is, the boundary layer is less than three meters deep. This example is typical at this site. The thin elevated layer of fog, seen just below the treetops, originated as ground fog over slightly higher ground to the right of the photo. This early morning photograph reveals multiple layers. The cause of this layering is not known, but may be the result of vertical mixing over thin layers where fog condensation marks the upper part of the mixing layers. The next photo captures stratified fog moving from left to right around a one and a half meter rise. In this image, machine-generated fog flows from left to right down a gentle slope, then rises over colder, denser air at the bottom, often referred to as a cold pool. Apparently, the downslope drainage flow has enough kinetic energy to rise over the cold pool, although it may be aided by a local pressure gradient. This picture illustrates how turbulent motions, interacting with a solitary wave on the right, leads to vertical mixing. Although giving the impression of highly disturbed airflow, the motions are actually quite weak. This is an example of skin flow, about 20 centimeters deep. Waves in the skin flow are moving from left to right. Such flows are too thin to study with traditional instruments. Although still images of fog movements allow a visual way to identify various air currents, the real insight comes in watching these submeso motions in a time-lapse video. In the first example, a microfront advances as the leading edge of a pulse of airflow from the left. Rising motion can be seen in advance of the microfront, followed by a reverse eddy at the top and sinking motion behind the microfront. Let's watch it again. The reverse eddy is larger than the area visualized by the fog and not only mixes fog upward, but transports warmer fog-free air downward behind the microfront. Notice that at the end of the video, the microfront reaches the fog machine, leading to a reversal of the airflow at the ground. This video of machine-generated fog shows the quasi-two-dimensional structure of the microfront in the form of a vortex with an axis into the screen. Again, rising motion develops ahead of the microfront with sinking motion behind the microfront. Let's watch the clip again. This time, notice the structure in the vortex along the microfront perpendicular to the airflow. A solitary wave moving to the left is followed by several cycles of a wave train propagating toward the right. With imagination, four or more cycles can be detected. A sequence of more than a few well-defined cycles is uncommon. This segment ends with a relatively quiet period. This video segment represents a typical mix of submeso motions. First, concentrate on the foreground where waves are superimposed on a skin layer of fog next to the ground, sometimes giving the impression of waves on a beach.
Solitary waves in thicker fog in the background, but in front of the trees, seem not well correlated to motions in the foreground. Wave-like motions propagate from all directions and sometimes the wind direction suddenly shifts with the passage of a microfront within the fog layer. A seemingly quiet period now begins, but careful inspection reveals considerable submeso activity that presumably generates weak turbulence and vertical diffusion, as well as horizontal dispersion through changing wind direction. In many locations, such as in this broad valley setting, nocturnal winds are dominated by submeso motions for extended periods of time. The barn on the left disturbs the flow throughout the video. On days when the wind is weaker and the stratification greater, the air flows around the barn instead of over it. At the end of the day before the sun sets, the surface begins to cool and the daytime convective eddies begin to decay. This video clip starts near the end of this decay period when stratification limits the turbulence activity. Surface winds were 3 meters per second prior to the decay and remain this strong above 10 meters height throughout the video. In spite of this significant airflow, the size of the eddies continues to decrease, sometimes in irregular fashion. Larger eddies continue to occasionally penetrate to the surface, but with decreasing frequency and strength as the surface continues to cool. Intermittent skin flows less than a half meter thick form close to the ground, with occasional sharp layering immediately above. The overlying layered flows are only weakly coupled to the surface. Flux measurements at two meters would not be very representative of the flux from the local ground surface. Let's move to the other side of the fog for a closer look. Here we can see the vigorous wave activity, which is actually quite slow moving in real time. Notice that the flow is sufficiently stratified that trees in the background do not significantly disturb the flow. These waves, wind shifts, and other submeso motions continue throughout the night and early morning until surface heating once again leads to convective eddies. 